There's probably still going to be some further uh, uncertainty when it comes to regulation. But what's important, and as the past few months have indicated or shown us, is that policy direction and implementation really is key when it comes to one's risk reward profile when investing in China. So when we look at the overarching policy framework in the country, it really does revolve around security, autonomy and fairness. And those three areas, security in terms of data, both for the individual, corporate and the state, autonomy that's regarding the dual circulation policy and, and China really ensuring that there's some kind of autonomy in terms of their own supply chain. And finally, fairness, whether it's got to do with individuals, families, the income gap and also the competitive environment. So keep looking at the regulatory environment, but certainly valuations in some sectors are looking very attractive and the earnings period at the moment is also highlighting some good opportunities. Yeah, but my question was more about the tech sector. Do you think that valuations have come to a point where investors believe that from a risk reward perspective, all the risk is in the price? Well, again, you know, when it comes to the data focus, when we're looking at the reforms, we could see further news flow coming out. But like for like, when you look at Chinese tech names, especially the big tech names versus the U.S. peers or their U.S. peers, they are looking very, very attractive when you have certain names, for example, trading at low teens, but still delivering in terms of, of their market strategy as well as their free cash flow. The only area I would caution, as you do see these increased regulatory changes, what it means from a capex perspective in terms of companies really ramping up when it comes to their compliance in, in terms of documentation and recording. So that's something to keep an eye on. But again, it's, it's on a case by case basis. And we should be looking at the regulation from a broad perspective versus just the individual companies. Mm. Uh, Catherine, you were saying earlier that there are some sectors that have uh, experienced extreme negative sentiments, so they're also uh, looking attractive. So aside from tech, mm -hmm. which ones do offer the opportunity? So if we look back at 2019, especially 2020, we saw this very crowded trade emerge. And it really was focusing on, on the big tech names, the consumer tech related names, some healthcare names. And it actually going into this year, felt overly frothy to a degree. So the pullback again, whilst we have seen a correction in China, especially versus let's say the US market, it, it did seem somewhat a little bit refreshing because we did see policy normalize, et cetera. And then on top of that, we have the regulatory issues going on. So in terms of the companies that we're really looking at, um, it's across all sectors, that diversification, that income story still, so the high dividend payers are looking very, very attractive. The names that have been ignored over the past couple of years because of the sectors they have been in, i.e. the sectors that weren't loved by the general sort of investor base. And again, when we do look at this sort of uncertainty that continues, it's about the companies who have got proven track records, who can optimize their business models, but don't underestimate companies' abilities to adapt and evolve in China. And we have seen that time and time again.